that's where processed foods are not going to harm you. Nothing is going to determine anymore what you can eat or not. You can make processed foods work for you in recovery. There's no excuse to um, keep those fear foods because ultimately they are not junk. Of course, theoretically, you can get all the nutrients and all the calories from whole foods only, but you are not going to recover in the end on all levels. You are not going to get full recovery if you're only focusing on whole foods because it's going to feed all these fears all of the time. Living in the reality and not acting like the reality is not the reality. You know, we do have these foods in reality and if we want to be part of this world and uh, don't live in stress 24-7 until the rest of our lives, then that is the way to find balance with it all. Hey guys, it's Miri Kamanens here and today back with another English video. For all German viewers, please subscribe to my German channel. So, question of the day, you know who you are. I don't quite understand. You've been high carb, low fat, rotted for before and that's when you ate around 3000 calories according to your older videos. That's right. So why were you not able to solve your health issues at that time? And that is not so true. So if you've taken a look at my more recent videos that you're going to see that my health issues didn't arise when yeah while I was eating 3,000 calories no it was it was more like the opposite because I couldn't eat enough and due to several reasons digestive reasons I had severe pain severe bloating and digestive issues so the question is always what was first was it the digestion issues or was it the under eating itself? The hen or the egg, as you say. And you never know exactly because also for a long time I was doing a lot of exercise and then it's very easy to under eat for the amount of exercise you do. But when I had the digestive issues and they were like over a long time, they developed slowly and surely and got worse and worse up to like an official diagnosis of parasites and I will make a video on that also. I'm still looking for the pictures, the proof pictures. Some people they won't even believe you that you have parasites and I also was someone who was like okay yeah you have parasites well I'm not sure about that but uh, yeah, in my case there is no question about it um, yeah that's just how it was. Because of the parasite I definitely had even more digestive issues and like allergic symptoms, um, allergic reactions, intolerances, leaky gut, my immune markers on all tests they were super high. So every doctor said well obviously there's something wrong. So my health issues arose when I under ate, when I ate too little. During the worst time I even like I could only eat fruit without any severe pain. Um, like excruciating pain. You can also look at my timeline on my website and that like that timeline is literally like the best answer and most complete answer I could give to your question. So I'll get to the other part of the question. I personally do rotate four and I eat like uh, at least 2500 calories because I'm also trying to recover but if I eat processed foods I really feel so tired and sluggish. Yeah so that's kind of a topic. So I do have videos, you really should watch them, where I explain why it makes sense to not eat 100% whole foods only. So, direct disclaimer, I'm not saying process is better than whole foods, but there's a certain balance that you should get to, because we can't act like we're not living in the reality. Because in this reality, we do have these suboptimal foods, and I really put this in really big uh, quotation marks because in recovery these processed foods can actually be quite optimal because especially when your digestion is not up to par and I'm getting to how to eat processed foods without them harming you in a minute because you can not all processed foods are equal there are processed foods that can be good for you and not harm you in any way especially in recovery especially when the digestion is not up to par uh, because the metabolism and the digestion the gastro emptying is actually slowed down and you get constipation because of that and everything and indigestion. You really have to differentiate between processed foods and processed foods. So just 
fundamentally, there's nothing wrong with processing foods and humans have always done it. There's nothing unnatural about processing foods because I'm saying that because so many people think that, you know, pressing your orange, drinking it, it's processed. The fiber is kind of removed. Our body does know how to deal with these things because there are many people who say that it can't, but it's not true. So I think the problem arises where you add things to the processed food, which are harmful for our digestive tract, not when you take some of the good stuff away from the food. That's not the harmful part. The harmful part is, for example, the pesticides. They have an antibiotic effect or preservatives. They have such an effect on our digestion that has like a harmful effect in the long term in our digestive system. It doesn't really matter if there's a little bit less water, a little bit less fiber. No vegan ever died because of fiber deficiency, right? It's like we eat so much fiber and so many nutrients. It's not like it's going to harm us if a little bit, you know, on a basic whole foods diet, like when we eat something processed in between on top of our whole foods diet, that that is, wow, butterflies are beautiful. <laughs> and that that is going to magically be harmful for us. It doesn't really matter if we eat something that has a little bit less of it, right? We're not talking about the extremes here. We're talking about a little bit of processed foods where socially desired. It doesn't even mean you have to do it like for yourself all the time. But I would say that in recovery, there is a place for it to really do it just for yourself in order to lose these fear foods. The goal is to lose all the fear foods so that in the end, you can be totally free mentally and physically um, from any uh, obsessions around food, you know, when you're going out, when you're just living your life, enjoying food. Nothing is going to determine anymore what you can eat or not. I'm not saying you should eat processed as much as possible. I'm saying you should, yeah, but I am saying you should be um, losing all the fear foods. And that requires you to really step out of your comfort zone and really target it and really do eat processed foods in recovery <laughs> on top of the whole foods so that you can be free in the social situations. And for example, after recovery, I myself, I do it that way. I, I don't really crave processed foods for myself. But if my, you know, if someone is going to give me something, and definitely in social occasions, I will just go with the flow and roll with it with whatever we are going for. Like, it's not a deal at all. You can make processed foods work for you in recovery. There's no excuse to um, keep those fear foods because I'm getting a lot of comments processed foods don't work for me or didn't work for me in recovery the question is what kind of processed food are we talking about processed foods that are full of artificial sweeteners preservatives additives you should try yourself like just try but for me that was really not working for me but what worked for me was other processed foods that I processed myself or that I just bought in for example, organic processed foods, they usually don't have these additives and preservatives and yeah, are not allowed to have like the artificial sweetness. But they tend to be full of stevia sometimes, which is a whole nother topic for another video. Stevia does cause bloating as well, like just saying. Let me know in the comments if you want to know more about that. I have a crazy history with stevia views. I have made a detailed video about um, how, why it makes sense to eat organic and I also like for a long time I actually was in denial about that as well um, because I also like many people I was thinking well that's just you know people just want to make money off of that label and you should also not go to the other extreme and say well I'm only gonna eat like organic only like in an orthorexic kind of sense have a mental sanity but don't deny like scientific facts um, which are obvious. For example, you don't want to have antibiotic effects in your gut. Long term, you will have problems with that. And for example, wheat, non-organic wheat, in my recovery, did not work. I could try however I want, like any kind of bread or pasta, non-organic, I had severe pain. But anything organic with grains and wheat, ta-da! Like, Voila, 
I didn't have any problems. Like you should really try it. And I really got into that matter and I will link a video by Zach Bush. And it's going to open your eyes. Like I really recommend watching it. Sorry. Especially gluten intolerance might not be such a big thing. And it's more so like the the pesticide intolerance. It's what is sprayed on the gluten, on the wheat, that causes the harm. It's not like the wheat and the gluten itself are the problem, but the pesticides, it's, it's super, super um, interesting. But the first priority is eating enough. Don't stress about small things, even if it's organic or not. I'm just talking about, you know, processed foods, making your tire sluggish. Mm, you have to look at the bigger picture, like, what are you talking about if, when you're saying processed foods? I'm also planning on writing an ebook about what exactly I ate in recovery um, to minimize bloating and uh, digestive issues and leaky gut and intolerances because I had a hard time eating enough in recovery in the beginning and I really had to figure out how to eat enough without the bloating and, uh, be and I really wasn't able to digest whole foods only all the time in the beginning. It wasn't possible, like my <laughs> stomach was like, what, the fiber? I'm not able to do that right now because I'm really damaged. And you know, also due to the parasites and stuff. But even then in recovery, I always made sure that if I want to eat something, I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> I'm gonna lose the fear of that food. I didn't really uh, stick to, the, to any kind of rules. I'm just giving you kind of a, uh, something to hold on to so you can lose that fear of processed foods also and if you have the choice you can choose the one that's going to um, make you feel less pain that doesn't mean that you eat any less calories mind you when I had the choice in my recovery I chose the processed foods or the high calorie foods that didn't cause me any issues at all you really don't want to make your recovery even more painful and more difficult and hard on you than it has to be. We do tend to feel even worse or you know even fat in recovery when we are so so bloated and you don't have to you don't have to do that to yourself if you have the choice. But there were these moments regularly when I knew well okay I know I do need to eat it because mentally I need to neurally neurally rewire i know and i accept and you know that i'm going to suffer some suboptimal feeling down there um and that's okay because recovery is far more important you need to weigh up the pros and cons you want to recover so what's going to help your recovery is good you know you need to lose these fear foods that is first priority just tell yourself well it's worth it from time to time if I'm going to have digestive issues because of that. If you eat like whatever percentage, majority of your foods of whole foods as a vegan, then by all means just eat some processed foods on top. And it's not like replacing the whole foods, it's not replacing the nutrients, it's just adding some nice things to it as well. It's just about the whole picture. It's about what you do on a daily basis, continuously, and not about uh, some fun foods. Yeah, I'm really calling them fun foods and not junk foods. Because ultimately they are not junk. If you're consuming the ones that I'm talking about, the ones that don't have uh, all these other things added, they are good for you. They can be really good for you. Um, because they also carry nutrients. They might not have as much nutrients as the other, but that doesn't really matter. As I said, the whole picture is what determines if what you're eating is healthy. Even like the worst of the worst, it's going to make you, you know, feel like crap. Um, your body is able to handle that if, uh, you know, it's not taken to the extreme and, you know, um, your digestive system can't recover from that. But just in general, if you're suffering from leaky gut or any digestive issues, it does make sense to um, just pay attention to what kind of processed foods you're choosing. And then, if you're choosing the ones that are not causing any problems, then that's where processed foods are not going to harm you. If anything they are going to help you in recovery because as i said the goal is to get away from these mental blockages and to just be able to live your life and be able to eat stress-free 
when you're out and about and just living your life. Living in the reality and not acting like the reality is not the reality. You know, we do have these foods in reality and if we want to be part of this world and of our other fellow humans and uh, don't live in stress 24-7 until the rest of our lives, then that is the way to find balance with it all. During recovery, the percentage will be more, like you really have to introduce all of your fear foods, that's top priority, and then also beyond recovery where, you know, they are just a part of your life. And nothing more and nothing less. And that's the beauty about it. And so that's why I say um, you do not want to recover on whole foods only, because in order to get to that goal of total food freedom in your daily life, you need to lose these fear foods. I'm repeating myself. The only way you're losing these fear foods, like the only way to go about it, is by facing that fear and eating them. There should not be any rules. There should be food freedom, but you still have an intuition. Still your body communicates with you. And when you eat something that you, where you exactly know this is going to cause me feeling shitty and crap, then, you know, you have the power to just choose something that's going to make you feel great. Um, it is part of our intuition um, to pay attention to how we feel before, during and after uh, what we eat. And that is also ultimately, ultimately cause us to, you know, have, to, to find out what foods we feel best on, on all levels. And while we really don't want to overthink that, <laughs> and we really, um, don't want to be too mindful about it, uh, you know, and just uh, be super obsessive about it. They do have their place and there's a reason why we have these feelings and they will tell us what we feel best on. Um, and in recovery, you should have more of a, this might not be like the most perfect food, but I don't care because I need to lose that fear of that food kind of mindset. And long term, beyond recovery, you will have all of these tools and all of these, you know, all of the full freedom that you can um, just follow your intuition, but without being obsessive or without having rules. So if your body says, no, stop, stop it, pay attention to it. And especially in recovery, when there are so many things that you can't actually uh, properly digest uh, because you're di it's not because of the foods most of the time but because your digestive, ish, um, your digestive system is so slow and inefficient but later you are going to be able to uh, digest them without any problems like i have so many foods that i can digest if, that i can digest without any problem at all that did cause me problems in recovery so don't always think the food is a problem really is very important beyond recovery even if you then are faced with the foods that make you feel crap you really love the taste of it then of course it's going to be worth it to just eat it anyway and the great thing about it is that you will make such a great memory because you're not going to be um, focusing on how bad it's making you feel but you know the, the taste of it and the whole moment and the people and the happiness and it just brings a smile on your face because it's not a your food anymore you need to be focusing on the mental part of recovery just as much as on the physical part so of course theoretically you can get all the nutrients and all the calories from whole foods only but you are not going to recover in the end on all levels you are not going to get full recovery if you're only focusing on whole foods because it's going to feed all these fears all of the time and you're not going to get to that place where you're just able to live your life and just go on these trips and travels and whatnot. You don't have to think like, I only can eat junk food now, no whole food. Especially in recovery where many people have deficiencies. Yes, you need the micronutrients, but then on top of that, on top <laughs> of that, I just ate the processed foods that I desired and craved. And that's how both of these worlds complement each other. If you feel like um, creating some captions or subtitles for this video, please feel free to do so. I'm going to enable this for my community here on YouTube so you can just right away because I'm not going to find the time to do that. Please leave me a like and a comment and share this one with whoever you think needs this and appreciate my earrings. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.